This is the second time Go players compete with machines in high-profile public matches. Last year, it was AlphaGo versus Lee Sedol of uh, South Korea, and Lee also lost 4-1. to one. Since last time in South Korea, what progress do you think AlphaGo has made in terms of its intelligence? Yeah, from what I heard from other people, it seems actually this time AlphaGo is much better than last time. Although he only won by half a point, what I said is it has kept uh, the margin throughout the game. So I, I think it has really improved. From what I heard, uh, actually, it's just uh, the, the framework is the same as last year, but we'll see after the game, they probably review what engineering did since then. Mm -hmm. Professor Rojas, are you surprised to hear the latest news coming out of Ugen that again AlphaGo is uh, winning the first of the three matches? What is your take of this story? Yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not surprised because uh, there is a law in computing that computing power advances by twice every 18 months. And in the case of parallel processors, it's even a factor of 10 every year. So every year, AlphaGo is going to be more powerful. It's going to be able to compute more moves. So uh, in just a few months, I think that AlphaGo is going to beat any human player in the world. Wow. The reason, Professor Song, why AlphaGo has become so good is its ability to learn by itself. And it's interesting to see that Chinese player Ke Jie also tried to learn AlphaGo's uh, strategy at the beginning of this game. But how powerful is the human learning process compared with the machine learning? Well, I think it's actually interesting because AlphaGo was designed specifically by learning the humans. Right? Actually, the, the, the means, the president of the deep mind was actually had uh, had a degree in neuroscience, so he really studied the brain. So I think w why the machine is winning is because uh, it can compute so much faster than the human mind. So it, when it learns how the humans think and goes on to uh, with vast amount of computing power, it can really surpass what human can do. Professor Rojas, now this match is taking place after AlphaGo went on a 60-game winning streak online. Should we be worried if AlphaGo becomes invincible? Yeah, AlphaGo will become invincible, but the real question is if we should be worried that this kind of achievements can be translated to other domains, for example, uh, robotics, or uh, uh, robots that can uh, do the work that humans do in factories and if they're going to substitute uh, people working there. So I think that's a real issue. Uh, in, in computer games or in games in general, computers are going to be always better than humans uh, uh, when, when the speed advances. The real question is if they are going to be able to substitute all human workers. Mm -hmm. Well, that's definitely going to take the fun away from, from board games, Professor Song. Isn't that the case? Well, I don't think so, actually, because no. we can take the, uh, the example of chess. I mean, uh, computers beat chess uh, years ago, right? But uh, uh, we still play chess. And actually, what happened is actually in the top games, the top chess players uh, team up with computers to compete with each other. So I think that's probably what happened in Go as well. Well, if AlphaGo wins all the three games this time against Akurji, or even just two out of the three, does it mean that self-learning capability of uh, artificial intelligence is so strong that uh, human beings uh, can, no human beings can beat it anyway, Professor Rojas? Yeah, self-learning is, is a very important thing. Uh, in the case of AlphaGo, AlphaGo can just be playing against itself uh, every minute, every hour of every day. So it can just uh, be playing 24 hours. And if you want, for example, to build uh, uh, autonomous cars and you want to, them to be drive better than humans, then you can do a simulation in the computer and the computer can be driving essentially uh, the 24 hours. Then afterwards, you can uh, use a robot, you can use a, a, a car and uh, put it in, into the highway and let the robot drive for millions of kilometers. So uh, this self-learning uh, capability is one of the most important features of uh, intelligent systems. Professor Song, does AlphaGo represent the highest technology of artificial intelligence nowadays? Why is there so much importance attached to this program? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's, at least in my example, one of them. The other one is probably the recent one where they won at the poker game. So I, I think uh, AlphaGo was uh, a significant advancement in the, in the field of artificial intelligence. Was Go was 
considered to be unbeatable after chess was beaten. So that was kind of the last defense in the games for, for humans, you know, uh, for the complete game, uh, complete information games. So so why why pe people thought was you know, it was a uh, unable to beat was because you cannot calculate all the uh, outcomes. You have to use some kind of intuition. Well, some commentators are saying human beings have disadvantages such as mood swings, whereas computers don't. What could be the disadvantage on the part of AI programs compared to human beings, Professor Rojas? Well, the main disadvantage uh, for computers is that they, they don't uh, reason like we hum humans do. They don't uh, take into account all the possibilities. They only can do what we have programmed them to do or what uh, they have seen in, in the world. For example, uh, a self-driving car, if it only drives in the highway, it can be uh, a very good driver. But if you put that uh, self-driving car in the city, it's going to, to, to fail because it has never seen pedestrians crossing the streets. And even if you put that autonomous car uh, to learn in a city like New York or in a European city, and then move that car to a city like Mexico City, then it's going to fail again because it, it, has, it had not uh, seen all possible scenarios. So humans are very good at generalizing, at uh, learning from experience, but generalizing going further than the data. Computers uh, are not so good at that. Do you think it is possible one day that computers will acquire that generalizing capability as well, Professor Rojas? Well, I think that computers are advancing very fast uh, every year. Many people ask me if they will become as intelligent as humans in this century. I really don't think that computers will be as intelligent as humans in the next, uh, in this century. I think that uh, they lack uh, common sense. So there are many things that you have never experienced, you have never seen, but you have uh, what we call common sense. And if it happens to you, then you know how to react. Also, computers will never have something like empathy. They will never have something like, like humor. Uh, so human intelligence is very, is very uh, connected to the human body. So we are not just brains, we are, we are bodies with, with a brain. And this is something that a computer is never going to be able to experience. Professor Sonson, you are a principal investigator from the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Center for Brain Inspired Computing. Is there the possibility that uh, we can develop some kind of software or hardware so that artificial or robots can acquire the reason that uh, Professor Rojas just talked about and the empathy that Professor Rojas just mentioned? Yes, I think it's possible, but it, it, it depends on what we call the emotion, etc. Because uh, at, at right now, I, I also study neuroscience. Right now, we don't completely understand the, what the emotional system or the, the humans are doing. But I think uh, you know, if empathy by means, if we mean that we understand what the other person is feeling or what state is in, I think that's totally possible for computers. Mm -hmm. uh, my question at this moment is: It seems that more and more we are. Uh, seeding territories uh, traditionally considered to be only capable by human. For instance, this Go game, and now we're seeing, okay, another territory lost to robots. Is there a boundary between artificial intelligence and human intelligence, Professor Rojas? Yeah, there's a boundary, and uh, the boundary, I would uh, draw it at emotions. So I, I, I'm really sure that computers can be much better than, than humans uh, playing games, playing computer games, driving, uh, operating a factory, moving uh, machinery, that computers can do that better. But uh, computers will never have a social experience, will never ha have emotions, will never experience uh, society as we experience it today, so that humans will still have a place in this world. Professor Song, uh, what is the possible risks that uh, you uh, relate to the development of artificial intelligence in the near future? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the basically two. One is that if, uh, if um, AI is, is allowed to make decisions by itself, then that's a little dangerous. The other, especially if it's, it would be dangerous, if there are also networks, then you know, one decision can propagate very fast throughout the network, then you know, it's, it's too late to stop it if it's a bad decision. Are these uh, scenarios uh, possible anytime soon, or are, you, are these just worries? 
I think these are possible even without artificial intelligence. So I think it's really how to keep these machines in safe place. All right, thank you very much. We have to leave it there. That was uh, Professor Song Sun from Tsinghua University and Professor Rao Rojas from the Free University of Berlin. And here is my last point. Before the match took place, representatives of the programmers for AlphaGo said, whatever the outcome of the encounter, the ultimate winner is the human race. As it's unlikely that the program and technology will be shared freely among countries, the winner for now is going to be the company who created this com the program. On the other hand, the invincible program could take away the fun of the game, at least partially, together with the socializing elements. For millions of Go fans around the world, this sport will remain attractive precisely because of the human emotions and vulnerabilities involved. As Ke Jie, the Chinese Go player, said before the match, AlphaGo will never have his passion for the game, but will always be a machine whose only warmth comes from its CPO cooling.